This is Zoe, and I feel like talking. This is podcast number 98, Spiritual and the Strange. If you're interested, check out number 99 and 100 as we are counting down from 100 to 1 and back again. In the previous podcast, I spoke about finding one's true north, which might include a time of solitude. See the Zoe Spiritual and Strange podcast playlist in the description box and comments section where you'll also find some channeled songs and films. Today I'm thinking about trauma in order to understand where we come from so ultimately we may know where we are going Today we'll explore an ancient mythological creature regarding this topic. First, let me ask you, have you ever felt not quite yourself? Feel you've lost yourself? Feel fragmented? Have you ever changed something about yourself to please someone else? So let's explore this topic through Selkie folklore. A Selkie is a mythological creature of Norse and Celtic origin capable of therianthropy. Therianthropy is the ability to metamorphose or shapeshift from one physical form or hybrid to another shape, such as that of an animal. A selkie, for instance, is a seal with supernatural ability to become human, live as such, and return to the sea at will as long as its skin may be retrieved for the journey home. It's often said that a selkie in human form is of dark coloring, not typical in Norse and Celtic regions. See the films Song of the Sea and The Secret of Rowan Inish, if you're interested in two different tellings of the myth. Basically, the tales revolve around Selkies compelled into marriage with humans who hide their seal skins so they can't return home to the sea they long for. As you might imagine, it doesn't bode well for humans who attempt such things. Let's explore some symbolism. In the film, The Secret of Rowan Inish, a fisherman marries a selkie, but chooses to hide her seal skin in the roof of their cottage. As mentioned, the selkie has been longing to return to the water though otherwise it seems all is well. One day, one of her children asks her, The sea is a symbol of beauty, danger, power, mystery, and the depths of emotion. Its surface may be calm or stormy. It is deep, so deep in some places that that depth cannot be measured. The sea is largely unknown and misunderstood no matter human beings try to study it. It's likely our oceans will remain enigmatic as outer space. So the seal is a symbol of happiness, playfulness, peacefulness, and kindness, unless provoked to be protective. Optimism and adaptability, strength, because their world is the sea herself, deep imagination and transformation 
which reminds me of the myth of a selkie turning into a human and back again into a seal. A coat represents protection from the outer elements. Have you ever lost or given away a coat? The boat is obviously a vessel with which humans may try to explore the sea, though we all know there are many vessels lost to the depths of the drink, as it's called in the secret of Rowan Inish. And the house is also a protective symbol of warmth, love, marriage, trust and family, solitude, healing and abundance, a safe place to retreat, rest and nourish ourselves and our families. It ought to be a fortress for well-being. What do you think the roof is a symbol of? In the most common Selkie stories, the sealskin coat is taken and hidden away. The story speaks about the attempt to keep someone from being who they really are. And in the Selkie's case, as the embodiment of seal attributes I spoke about previously, one's happiness is taken away and hidden. If we think about all the characters in the story, we might say they are all parts of what it means to be human, the dark and the light within each one of us. The man, longing for a mate, uses a boat to explore the sea. Her bounty, the world of emotions, risk, life and creation. He sees the selkie, a creature half woman, half seal, happy in her element, and at first they fall in love, both, I think, with a desire to care for one another. At some point, though, the man chooses to take the most precious part of the woman, ironically, that which he fell in love with, and acting out of fear, he hides her coat, thinking that if he keeps the coat, she will never leave him. The children in the story represent the woman and the man, the innocence and love which brought them together in the first place. And sensing the Selkie mother is unhappy, for after all, they are also half Selkie themselves, tell the Selkie the truth by asking a question about their father's actions, which I think they don't fully understand. I think they don't understand because they are the embodiment of what a home ought to be. No gender distinctions here. What a home ought to be, as I said earlier, it is a fortress for well-being. So when things are not fitting in with that ideal of a fortress for well-being for all in the home, even if it's just one person in the home, then I feel like the children in the story represent that inability, that innocent quality, can't quite grasp or understand why the father in the story would seek to contain their mother or imprison their mother. So I have some more questions for you before we close. Have you ever lost your coat? Did you give your skin away or has someone else tried to make you forget you ever had one in the first place? And why do you think it was lost or hidden? And if you've answered the question of what do you think the symbolism of the roof is, then this question might follow. Is there anything that you are keeping from yourself? Might you find your coat in the roof? So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, comment below. Let me know 
your thoughts and your feelings if you feel comfortable doing that. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you regularly support the Zoe channel, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. And if you made it this far, comment roof in the comments section below to let me know that you are here with me at the end. Stay tuned for some outtakes from The Secret of Rowan Inish, and I will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. that evening, as Liam was rowing home, he was followed by a solitary sea. It seemed joyous in its movements. It rolled and dived within the waves, joyous in the sleekness of its body. But its eyes, as with all its kind, held a sadness as deep as the salt. The seal left him at last. Liam felt a great emptiness inside, a fear. He rode furious for the shore, even though the sea was heavy on his oars. When he got home, it was the faces of his children told him his fears were true. For once a selkie finds its skin again, neither chains of steel nor chains of love can keep her from the sea. day on, it was forbidden to harm a seal on the island, and man and beast lived side by side, sharing the wealth of the sea, and sometimes the Canadians would see her.